morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you all today? Very good. How are you? I'm doing well. I am here. So that's, <laughs> I, I went to the uh, service of closure for the Rock Glen Church yesterday, which was lovely and sad and, and all of those things, um, but also really messes with my head because I was in church on Saturday. <laughs> um, so then trying to remember that today is Sunday. I have to come to church today. <laughs> it was always just a little bit. So I'm here. And so are all of you. Right church, right time. So it's wonderful to see you all. Uh, a few announcements. As you will remember, we are here uh, throughout the rest of the month of August. Next week will be a communion service. Uh, so please plan to attend and join us in the sacrament of communion. Um, at the back of the church, you will notice that there are some uh, lots of pieces of paper. Those are left over from last week's service uh, about different prayer practices and, um, uh, and spiritual disciplines of prayer. And so if you are wanting to take one or two or multiple, uh, please feel free to do so. There's some uh, coloring pages that you're invited to um, color with intention and prayer. Uh, there are some labyrinths, the finger labyrinths that you can walk and uh, or walk with your finger and, and pray as you go. Uh, there are some scriptures there that we were using as blackout scriptures. If you want to know more about that, ask someone who is here or ask me. Um, I think that's all the things that are back there. Um, anyways, there are lots back there, so if you would like to take some, please feel free to. Any other announcements that need to be shared? A thanks to Beth for doing our tech for us this morning, and to Sherry and Audrey and Anton again for playing with us, uh, and to Dwayne for being okay to switch off of his day. Uh, <laughs> Dwayne was supposed to play this morning, um, and we had so many requests last week for the trio to play again that uh, they graciously said yes, so we appreciate that. Our music license number is A609189 of One License LLC, and our music is reproduced with permission. Each week we begin our service by acknowledging the territory, and this is something that sometimes can start to feel a little rote, and something that we just do. But I think it's something that's important to do. And so it is important for us to actually listen to the words that we say, to really take them to heart, and to intentionally move forward in a good way. So we begin our worship by remembering where we gather. As people of Southern Saskatchewan, we live and love, worship and work on land that is the traditional territory of the Lakota, Nakota, Dakota, Soto, Cree, and Métis peoples, an area which is more recently known as Treaty 4 land. And we give thanks for the spirituality and stewardship of this land's first inhabitants. As people of the United Church of Canada, we remember the harm that has been and continues to be done to our Indigenous kindred in the name of God, and by the authority of our church, that we repent and ask forgiveness. As people of this planet we call Earth, we remember that we are all connected, and we seek to live in right relationship and reconciliation with other children of the Creator. We remember that we are treaty people, and we seek to follow in the way of Jesus, who calls us to love one another as he has loved us. For our call to worship this morning, you are invited to read the bolded parts in our call and response. Come and worship. We come to this place as individuals bound together. And so we give thanks to the one who created us to be in a relationship. Come and gather and worship this day. And so as we gather, we light our Christ candle as a visual reminder to us, a physical reminder to us, that God is in our lives here when we gather in this place and when we go out into our daily living. God is with us, and we are not alone. Mm -hmm. 
Will you pray with me? Holy God, you have called us to flourish and succeed in community, not isolation. May we see the value of those you place in our lives and how they encourage us in our relationships with one another and with you. Today, we thank you for the gifts of friendship and love and pray that you would guide us too as we walk together through all of our days. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is number 602 in Voices United. That's the Burgundy book in front of you. <coughs> Let's be the tie that binds. <laughs> Because he has not sinned against you, and because his deeds have been of good service to you, 
For he took his life in his hand when he attacked the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great victory for all Israel. You saw it and rejoiced. Why, then, will you sin against an innocent person by killing David without cause? Saul heeded the voice of Jonathan. Saul swore, as the Lord lives, he shall not be put to death. So Jonathan called David and related all these things to him. Jonathan then brought David to Saul, and he was out in his presence as before. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Do you like peanut butter chocolate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else here like peanut butter and chocolate? <laughs> I'm sorry I don't have any for you. What? I know, right? Wow. That turned ugly fast. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love peanut butter and chocolate. You know what else I love? Bacon and eggs. Do you like bacon and eggs? No? You like the eggs but not the bacon? Well, you know what? I, if I have my choice, really I like the bacon more than the eggs. So you know what? I think we'd be a good partnership. You and I can go to breakfast and you eat all the eggs and I'll eat all the bacon. Does that sound like a fair play? Yeah. That's the really cool thing about having friends. This is, we just heard about two guys named David and Jonathan. And they had this friendship and this relationship that was so close to each other. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. But you know what? Today, we're talking about the E in this. And it says empowered through spiritual friendships. Do you know why it's really important to have friends? So that you're not lonely. So that you're not lonely. Anybody else know why it's really important to have friends? Help you be a better person. Help you be a better person, right? Chocolate and peanut butter are really good each on their own, right? Bacon and eggs are really good each on their own. You can eat them by themselves, but they taste so much better when they come together, right? Like pancakes, pancakes and syrup. Pancakes and maple syrup, yeah. <laughs> what else? Peanut butter and jam, right? What else goes together? Any, what else? Mm. Pardon? Cauliflower and cheese whiz. Cauliflower and cheese whiz. Yeah. Ice cream and Coke. Ice cream and Coke. You make a float. Right? All of these things are really good on their own. Nobody's saying that, oh, well, if peanut butter's not with chocolate, then it can't be any good. You, don't, you shouldn't eat it ever, right? Peanut butter's really good by itself. Chocolate's really good by itself. But it gets even better when they put it together. And I think that I'm pretty okay by myself, and you're pretty okay by yourself. But when we become friends, we bring out the best in each other, right? We help each other to be better people. We help each other to learn more and to try new things, right? My sister's friends, she had never thought that she wanted to go on a zip line. You know, one of those zip lines that goes down across the forest? Yeah. Yeah. Her friend convinced her to do this. My sister loves her zip lines now. <laughs> but she never would have thought to, to try that, right? She's trying to convince me. I don't think I'm going to do it. <laughs> That's okay. But, but we, make, we push each other. We make each other better, right? That's what friendship's about. And I would wager a guess that all of the people here in this building right now would say the same about each other, right? That we, as we come together and we come to church and we come and become friends as we sit in worship together, as we sit down around the lunch table together, as we talk things over and, and we say, well, this is a different perspective than you have and this is something different, this is what I think and this is how, how I believe about something. We make each other better. And that's, that's a really cool thing. The Bible tells us over and over and over again how important it is to have good friends. Not the kind that'll just leave you high and dry. Not the kind that are gonna turn their backs on you. But the really good friends. And I'm really grateful that I get to call all of you my friends. And I'm really glad that you came to church today. 
So we're going to sing a song about two other friends in the Bible. Their names are Naomi and Ruth. And they became really good friends. One of them, Ruth, even left her home country. And she went with Naomi because she wanted to stay with her. So we're going to sing number 216 in more voices. That's the Spiral Bound book. Wherever you may go. Uh, one of the letters of Paul of the early church in Acts. 
um, and then we take the summer off and do something fun like a sermon series again. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely little rotation that we do. So, how many of you know the story of David and Jonathan? Was this a familiar scripture to you? Not so much a familiar scripture to you? So we've got some people answering yes, some people answering no, and a lot of people just not answering. <laughs> I promise, I'm not like trying to trick you up. I just, <laughs> I'm just curious whether this is something that is familiar or not. But there is no secret, you know, uh, uh, testing or you know, pop quiz or anything like that. Oh. Sorry, my water bottle is just about to fall on my toe, which I really don't need today. So, if you know much about David or Jonathan, if you Google David and Jonathan, you will find much debate. You will find much debate over whether they were just really good friends or whether they were lovers. I don't know the answer. I was not there. <laughs> I know I sometimes look like I'm older than I am, but I'm not that. <laughs> There's some good reasons on both sides. There's some good reasons to think that maybe they were in a relationship. It says multiple times that they made a covenant before God. And a lot of times when we talk about that kind of covenantal relationship in the Old Testament, it is about marriage. It is about what we would consider to be marriage now. Now, their understanding of marriage and our understanding of marriage, you know, well, well David uh, later on will have a whole boatload of wives. His son Solomon will have a whole bunch of wives and a whole bunch of concubines. So their idea of marriage is a little different than ours. But that covenantal relationship does often mean that. David, later on in the story, I, they kind of have bits and pieces throughout both 1st and 2nd Samuel. Um, and so I didn't want to read the entirety of the story of David and Jonathan to you, or we'd be here for the whole week. But later on at the end of the story, um, Jonathan dies. Saul and Jonathan um, are out at war and they die. And David sings a, a beautiful song about them. Um, and for them in his distress. And he says of Jonathan in that particular passage, I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of a woman. The same word for love that is used is the same one that is used throughout the Bible for heterosexual relationships. We know that there are different versions of love um, that are used throughout the Bible, and this is that word that is used for relationships um, that are romantic or sexual of any type. So there's some good reason to think that maybe they were in a relationship in that way. On the flip side, there's also good reason to think that maybe they weren't. Right? Not everyone who has good friends of the same gender is necessarily gay. It is possible to have good friends. Hopefully you have good friends of the same gender, just as much as you have good friends of the opposite gender. These could just be two young men, one the son of the king, one the son-in-law of the king. Uh, David marries one of the king's daughters, so they're brothers-in-law. Maybe it's just two young men who are finding their way in the world and who are supporting one another through the, what can be sometimes tumultuous happenings of a royal court. Right? There's good reason to say that maybe they're just friends. And at the end of the day, you can fight back and forth about it. And there are maybe particular points that you want to make that, yes, it is important to know which side of the line they fall on. But at the end of the day, for today's topic, it probably doesn't matter that much. I wanted you to be aware of the discussion. I wanted you to, to know that, you know, there's fun things to learn about this story and to, to go out and to, to learn more and study more and, and see what you think. But it, it doesn't really matter whether these two were in a romantic or sexual relationship or a platonic friendship. Because sometimes your best friend is your significant other. Right? Sometimes the person that you say is the best friend that you have in this life is the one that you love. And sometimes that person is someone else in your life. Sometimes your best friend is someone else. Maybe your, your spouse.
spouse or your significant other is really important to you, but the one that you would say is your best friend is someone else. It doesn't really matter who that is for you. The question today is about thinking about who that is. So what are the hallmarks of a good friendship? We see some of them in the story of David and Jonathan, which is why I picked their story for today. But there are also other friendships in the Bible. We talked a little bit about Naomi and Ruth. There's the story of Elizabeth and Mary. The disciples, I'd like to think that they were friends as they were wandering around, because otherwise three years with 12 guys you hate is not really a lot of fun. Job's friends. Job in, in the Bible has everything he could possibly hope for, and then has everything taken away from him. And his friends come and sit with him. Now, sometimes they say stupid things. I will admit that. Just because you have a friend doesn't mean that your friend is perfect. But Job has really good friends. They don't live it out perfectly, but they try. So think about all of those types of friendships that you see in the Bible and that you see in your own life. What are the hallmarks of a good friendship? First, you have to like each other. Jonathan loved him as his own soul, it says. David weeps and sings when Jonathan dies. These two just liked each other. They, they didn't hate each other. They didn't think, oh, Jesus, you know, he's the son of the king, and I'm, what am I going to do with him? You know, how am I going to get rid of him? He was sad when Jonathan died. Right? They liked each other. They want what's best for each other. They both know that if David is going to live and not be killed by Saul, that he has to live. Neither of them want that. They, they want to be able to, to stay together. Neither of them want David to leave, but they know that it is best for David to go. Because we only read the very first part of the story today. We read the, the part where David or Saul likes David, then Saul doesn't like David, then Jonathan talks on David's behalf, and Saul likes David again. That pattern repeats a whole boatload of times. <laughs> Over and over and over again, Saul becomes more and more um, murderous towards David. Uh, and and at, at some point, uh, David has to leave if that is going to be good for his life. They also know that even though they don't want this parting, that it will be safer for Jonathan to not have Saul be kind of constantly worried about this other guy <laughs> that it might be overtaking over his throne. They know that it will be safer for both of them that way. And so they want what's best for each other. They trust one another. David trusts Jonathan not to tell Saul where he is. Multiple times they come up with this plan of, okay, I'm going to go hide here. You're going to talk to your father. Um, and, and then you're going to tell me what he says. Um, and every single time they do that, David's putting his trust and putting his life in, in Jonathan's hands to say, okay, hopefully he doesn't, you know, decide that he's going to tell dad where to come find me and I'm a sitting duck, right? Jonathan, so David trusts Jonathan, but Jonathan also trusts David, that he's not going to forget that friendship when he's king, right? This is a vulnerable place for Jonathan to be. Jonathan could be the heir to the kingdom, but he's not. He's, he's saying, I recognize that God has called David to be king. And so I'm going to put my effort and put my work into making sure that David is safe and that David becomes king. And I'm going to hope like heck that he doesn't do what most king, new kings do and go and kill all the kings, the old king's family. They have to trust each other. They stand up for one another. Jonathan stands up to Saul and asks why he's so mad at David. And Saul even goes so far as to say to Jonathan, I know you've chosen him over your own flesh and blood. I know that you, you've chosen to side with David, and now I'm mad at you. They stand up for one another. They're real with each other. They wept together as they parted. 
They showed their emotions. They didn't just do what so often we think men are supposed to do, which, let's face it, this is not how life is supposed to be, right? You are not supposed to just bottle up your emotions and go, okay, see you later, bro, bye, <laughs> right? We're supposed to say, I'm heartbroken that we're, that we're parting. I'm heartbroken that, we're, that you're leaving. Let me show you my emotion. And so they do, they weep together. And they don't require a return on investment. Like David cares for Jonathan's son long after Jonathan has died, when there's no way that Jonathan can repay him. So Jonathan, David becomes king after Saul dies and, and Jonathan dies in the same battle. And David becomes king and he does a whole bunch of other things. And then one day he realizes, wait a second. I haven't done, as I said, what other kings often do and just go and kill all the previous royal family. But I haven't actually gone further than that and cared for them either. I've just kind of been neutral. I haven't killed them, but I haven't really been all that nice. And so he goes and he says, is there anyone left of Jonathan's line? Is there anyone left that, that, I, can, that I can care for and show my love of, of their father, grandfather, whoever? And so one of Jonathan's sons, who was five years old when Jonathan died, um, is, is left and comes and sits at David's table, at the king's table, for the rest of his life. David doesn't have this sense of, okay, well, our friendship was good while it lasted, but now that he's not here, there's nothing I can get out of him, so we're not friends anymore. He cares for Jonathan's family. Those are some of the hallmarks of friendship that, that I can think of and that I see in the story of David and Jonathan. I imagine if you think of the other friendships in the Bible, that you can see those same hallmarks throughout. And I imagine, hopefully, that you can start thinking about some of the people in your own lives who fit into those categories for you. Who do you like? Who do you want the best for and wants the best for you? Who can you trust? Who stands up for you and who do you stand up for? Who can you be real with? And you don't have a transactional relationship with just a pure friendship. That's what friends are. And I, I think it's important to think about our friends every once in a while. Not just in, in a passing, you know, oh, I haven't talked to so-and-so in a while. But a sense of actually thinking about why, why you are in a relationship with them. Why are they your friend? Now this says empowered by spiritual friendship. So what's, what's the difference? Spiritual friendships are those friendships that as well as being all those things listed above, allow and encourage and help you to grow in your faith or in your spiritual life. They may be the person that you can call and ask for prayer when you need it. It may be those friendships around the lunch table after church that you call uh, to live, that call you to live out your faith in tangible ways. It may be that friend that has a different faith than you, but by sharing yours and them sharing theirs, you help to clarify your own. Could be any other number of things. These spiritual friendships empower us as disciples of Christ and as human beings. They, they build us up, lift us up, and strengthen us for the journey ahead. So I'm going to give you a little bit of homework today. I know I said there was no test. I didn't say there was no homework. <laughs> And you can, I, I won't be checking to see if you did this homework, so you can choose not to do it if you want. But my, my hope, my suggestion to you, is that you take some time this week to write a letter, or draw a picture, send a text, or a card, or flowers, or, or make a phone call to the person, or multiple people, that are your friends. Tell them 
thank them for their friendship. Tell them why they mean so much to you. Actually have that conversation. Because I think, I don't know about you, but I will say for myself that sometimes I take my friends for granted. Anybody else feel that way? It's, just, it's kind of one of those, well, you know, we catch up when we catch up, and if we don't catch up, well, we'll figure it out eventually. Right? I sometimes forget to tell them how much they mean to me. And so my encouragement to you is that you don't take after me. <laughs> you take that opportunity while you have it. Because we are not meant to go through life alone. Over and over and over and over again throughout Scripture, we are told that a good friend is a blessing. So may you find that type of friend. May you be that type of friend that is a blessing to you and to others. Amen. Our musical folks are going to share with us a piece. Sherry, do you want to tell us a bit about it? Or? No? It's a favorite. It's a favorite. <laughs>
And sometimes it's the financial resources. I get to this congregation or to Limerick or to the world at large where God calls us to share our, our resources. If you have something that you'd like to drop in the offering plate, or if you already have, you are welcome to do so. Anything that is designated for the flesh will stay here. Anything that's designated for Limerick will go back to Limerick. If you want to, uh, if you're watching this online later in the week and you would like to send something to us, uh, feel free to mail it and we'll make sure that it gets where it needs to be. And if you don't have anything to drop on the plate, that's okay too. We appreciate the time and the talents. That's why we talk about all three, so that all, all three are lifted up and no one is made to feel like I don't have anything to give. We all have something to give to the work of God in this church. So whatever it is you bring, I invite you to think about it today as we sing our offertory hymn, Spirit, Open My Heart, and we'll sing the chorus of verse and chorus as printed in your bulletin. Loving God, you seek to be in a relationship with us, reminding us again and again that we are not meant to be alone, but we are meant to have friends and family around us, that we are meant to be in relationship with you. And so we come today as individuals, bound together as a community. We come with individual prayers and joys and concerns. We come as communal prayers. We come with those things that are on our collective hearts. And so we pray in thanksgiving. We pray that your blessing might be upon John and Kathy as they start their married life together that they might know joy 
as two become one. We pray the sorrows that are on our heart. We pray for those who are listed in our bulletin. We pray for those who are on our own individual hearts. Asking for your peace. Most importantly, your presence and your love. We pray, God, for our world, for our community, and for ourselves. We pray for this world of ours that has such great capacity for joy and excitement and helpfulness and camaraderie. We pray for this world of ours to see so much violence and hatred. This world that is marred of wildfire, and mudslide, and flood, and famine. We pray for our community, for our neighbors, for our friends, and even for those members of our community that we might not like very much. Because you call us be good people in relationship. You call us to stretch out the hands of forgiveness, the arms of love. And we pray for ourselves. Each of our lives go into our different and yet similar. And so we pray for the particular needs, desires of our lives. We pray in celebration and thanksgiving for the joy we hold. We come openly sharing our hearts as they fill with sorrow in those moments that are heartbreaking for us. And so we pray all of this, oh God, in the name of Jesus, who came to this earth and walked amongst us, who knows what it is to know joy and sorrow as a human life. And so we pray in his name, and we continue in the words he taught his disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is number 649. In Voices United, Walk With Me. I remember learning this in Vacation Bible School and singing it with all my friends, so I thought that it would be a good thing to share with all of you today. 649, Walk With Me.
friends, may you go from this time and place of worship, knowing that you do not walk alone, that you walk together and you walk with God through all your days. And so may you go with God's love and blessing this day and always. May God bless and keep you now and forever. Amen.